Hey, our Afri chick subscribers, we are happy again to be here in Akuru and be hosted by Madam Rosbella. And we want to give her some advice on where she can improve on her farm. And she's keeping uh, commercial layers 300 in number. And I'm proud of her because she has only had five mortalities and she's an amateur. <laughs> she's a first timer. You must be doing very well. And thank you so much for, for welcoming us. I just had a brief tour or just a brief look at your farm. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll give you advice mainly on three things. Mm -hmm. The first one is the laying boxes. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you're almost starting to receive your eggs. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's very important that this is now where the business starts from. Mm -hmm. So where you put these laying boxes mm -hmm. is not the correct place. Because your laying boxes mm -hmm. are facing outside, are facing actually the window grill. And there's much light coming from, the, from outside. Mm -hmm. The laying boxes are supposed to be in a darker area or an enclosed environment because of the position mm. best takes place in a darker area because the bird, you know, it, the chicken is a bird mm. and it would love to get some privacy in laying, okay? Mm. So it's always advisable mm. that in such a case, instead of your laying boxes facing the window, mm. they should face the wall. So you can just transfer your laying boxes from this side mm. to this side so they can face this other side, okay? Then very important, I've seen you put some patches mm. next to the window mm. where the chicken are roosting and basking the sun. Mm. That's correct, but what you've done is not the correct patch. Mm. A patch is not supposed to be a platform where the chicken can roost and also defecate. There is so much pile up of poop. Mm. You see the fecal matter is piling up there and whenever that, that happens, it creates a conducive environment for multiplication of bacteria. So when you're doing a patch, just go and get something like like um, a piece of wood that is round, that is cylindrical, like uh, that one you're using on the window. Then you can just put one. You can just suspend it one so that when the chicken sit on it and they poop, or rather they drop, the dropping will fall right on the ground. It will not have a surface where it can pile. I love this watering system that you have done. I saw it with the farmer. Actually, I will share the link up here so that you can have a look at that video. There's a farmer who had done a similar thing like you've done. But now, the difference with him and you is what you are using to cover the, the platform for the water. You see, you're using a flat piece of timber to cover the water. This one again is bringing a conducive environment for accumulation of feces. And you see once the feces accumulate, you are bringing in typhoid and cholera and mostly coccidiosis, where the chicken will start diarrhearing blood or chalk like poop. And if the chicken are laying, then you'll see your egg count drastically goes down. And that's what you're trying to avoid. So now, what is the remedy? Go and buy a, a gutter, a ridge, the one that when you're building a house, at the peak, at the apex, we usually put to run on top. You understand? Mm. Then replace that one, replace this timber mm -hmm. with that ridge, mm -hmm. so that the chicken cannot, cannot roost, cannot stand on top of it in a layman's language. And then you will suspend it to the wire on the other side, so that it keeps swinging but it's covering the water. When the chicken ro r jump to perch on it, it's swinging. It doesn't give them a platform to perch there. And because it's wedge-like, the dropping will also go to the, to the floor. I love everything you've done in terms of biosecurity. It's perfect. The farm is separated from the other area. But then now, try to manage the farm from within. Now control the disease from within. I love the, um, the, the bedding. It's correct. I, I, I've not seen any leakages. Your feeders, the drinkers are okay. I've not seen any wet floor. I also love the thickness of her bedding. It's correct. It's more than four inches, which is good. So the other thing you ought to improve is the feeders. You have the correct feeders. They are well suspended in line with the, with the, with the neckline or the backline. But the problem is you are not consistent. Some are suspended, 
some are on the floor <laughs> and they also have excess feeders Hello? Mm -hmm. if... so just have one line of feeders and have another line of feeders then remove these ones that are in between here they are not important at all I hope you understand how much feed you're supposed to give to the birds at what age do you have an idea? I'm going to share with you a document mm. on your email mm. then you can have a look at it mm. so that you can know the amount of feed you're supposed to give the chicken mm. at what age. That one mm. will help you mm. reduce mm. on the losses because sometimes farmers overfeed the chicken or sometimes you underfeed the chicken. Mm. So this guide will help you because the feed intake keeps increasing with the age of the bird. When the birds are laying from with 36 that is maximum production the feed is also at maximum which is 105 grams then when the bird starts reducing or the decline in egg production feed intake should equally reduce basically we usually say feed intake is directly proportional to weight gain and also directly proportional to egg production okay when they start producing I love how you're doing the the greens, suspending the greens. It is good. It helps control cannibalism. Be very careful on where you source the greens because now your birds are getting at a very crucial stage. If you miss an egg, you never get it. Because if the birds are supposed to lay 90% at week 35 or 36 and they don't lay, they lay 40%, they will never lay 90%. That one is gone with the edge, like that. That is how it, it is done. And just try to improve on those few things I've mentioned to you. One, I talked about your, your laying boxes. They should be on the other side, facing this other side. Two, I talked about your, drink, your drinkers. They are well done, but remove the timber you're using on top because you can see there's a lot of buildup of manure, and that's not what you want. Use the, the, the gutters upside down. Then lastly, I talked about the feeders. The feeders are good, you've suspended them, but you don't need too many feeders. You only need two lines of feeders here and there. And that will be correct. Then I also talked about the patches on the windows. Remove the, the platform, it's quite huge. It gives the chicken time to do much uh, build up of the manure. Just use one string off of timber. In future, you can adapt this system. It's called Natura system of depleter. The natural system of depleter is if you transfer these laying boxes to that other side, okay, then you will make something like a ladder going to, to the flow. Now, you will you'll actually put it on the wall, then it will come slowly, gradually up to the ground, all right? Then it will be like a staircase with those cylindrical timbers, cylindrical timbers where the, bird will, the birds will patch. So that the birds can patch in an, in an inclining manner. This one will help you keep more number of birds per unit area. And then you put your feeders right on the floor and then introduce your water line next to the laying boxes. I'll also try to share with you some pictures or some designs. You can have a look at that. Basically, that is now the current method of depleter system, especially if you're having a smaller area and you want to keep a huge number of birds. Let me assume your birds are 300. What is the spacing of this unit? If I have a simple look at it, it looks like that's two meters. This is two meters wide by around six meters, is it? Mm. So two by six is 12. So the maximum number of birds are supposed to keep here if it was um, if it was um, a breeder, mm. it's supposed to be 120 birds. But the opposite is true. You can keep 240. And even you can take it to 400. That is if you use the system they're trying to tell you. So you can see the challenge you're having in terms of the number of birds per unit area. But I'm so happy with what she's doing. I'm really encouraged by an amateur. You can see her birds, no cannibalism, no feather pecking. No malnutrition, you've controlled pests as much as you can, although I can see it from, from far, mm. but it's something you can control. 
and she has done it perfectly well. Watch her success story. It should be an encouragement to you as a youth. It should also be an encouragement to you as a mother back at home. And feel free to learn from what she has learned.